you don't need to speak about any companies in particular, but how do you get comfortable when you when you invest in China with some of the political regulation there? Yeah, so China is an interesting case for me that uh, involves a certain amount of um, contradiction. So uh, my friend Monish has been traveling in Turkey a lot, and it's public knowledge that he has investments in Turkey that the Turkish people, Turkish stock market gets very excited about. And I've told my friend Monish that, you know, it, there's some many other uh, far more unlikely things that are, that would happen before, or some very unlikely things that would happen before I invest in Turkey. And my word to Monish is, I don't want to invest in a country where the president imprisons journalists. And, um, you know, it's for a similar reason. I have friends who own have who had i don't know where it is right now investments in russia and sparebank for example at my recent value x conference somebody presented on a on a kind of a blue chip russian mining company which has got impressive uh uh they, they own well it's mining but they own some impressive assets and sparebank for your interest is the jp morgan of russia this institution has been around uh since before the russian revolution has survived so many changes in russia and has some extraordinarily high quality people working there and and what the the kind of the the rationale for investing in spare bank is that yeah there are a bunch of crooks around but everybody needs their switzerland so they all have to transact through somebody they have to need a counterparty they can trust and spare bank is the counterparty that they can trust but the the country is run by well we know who the country is run by and the question is you know if the idea that the fish always smells from the head um, so, you know, you, so, so I kind of like stayed away in part because, because I just don't, you know, there's a, um, there's a, so if I buy shares of a tobacco company, am I, am I killing people, uh, personally? No, but I'm somehow tainted by the connection to the company. And you might say, well, you own your shares. You don't, you don't have a direct investment in the company. But on another level, um, I do have a connection. This is all going to get to China, by the way, so I will answer your question. Um, but uh, so, so the same way that if you, if I'm invested in a country where they imprison journalists, then on some level, the tax revenues that my share in the company represents that it pays is kind of supporting that system. Do you really want to be there? So I, I haven't ruled any countries out as countries to invest in, but. But you know, it's unlikely I'd invest in Turkey. It was it was equally unlikely that I'd invest in Russia. I certainly, you know, now even though Sparabank is trading at 0.5 times earnings, you know, if you if you happen to want to, you know, go move to Russia and buy Sparabank, you could buy it for 0.5 times earnings. Um, so so let's go to China, and so China, you know, is not a free country, and imprisons the Uyghur population, which is. Uh, certainly human rights violations. At the same time, for me, it's a far more complex picture in China because they have done an extraordinary job of lifting a vast number of people out of poverty. And uh, while it's not a free country in the way that I would describe as free, uh, millions of people travel from China and voluntarily come back to China. So, so it's not so unfree that that people are people once they've left never go back and i think that where i come out on in china is that it's on a path there's a commitment by the communist party of china to make the country a better place they're working for the common good you know and they have a way of doing it which is not our western way but but there are many things that they've done in china that that people in the polit in the united states would have loved to have done for example restricting gaming uh for on children or um uh you know restricting tutoring companies that are basically just help people jump the line to get into educational establishments so they, they've achieved extraordinary things and they are continuing to seek to deliver for the overall population now does that mean that they're not committing human rights violations against the uyghurs or against uh, against press freedoms no they are uh, so it's an imperfect country, but I feel like it's on a path to somewhere good. And then I, I think that it's really important that in the countries where you invest, if you're investing in China, 
you know, if you're investing in a business that is not win-win for all concerned, like the tutoring companies, then you could get your head handed to you. But if you're in investing in a company that is genuinely building the Chinese civilization and global civilization, then maybe some risks are mitigated.